So, you say, well, what do I do? I didn't really pray about who I should marry. Well, I'm with you. I didn't either. But you know what God's will is for you and for me? He has a whole new will for us. And that is, be faithful and see Him work His will within your marriage. You know, maybe you took a wrong turn. And if you have, know that God hasn't given up on you. He, just, he, just, he doesn't say, well, you know, I had to do this and they didn't follow my will, so hey, there's nothing I can do. No, God does not give up on us. Okay? He has many as many possibilities as we create messes. And we create messes. Regardless of how many wrong turns you've taken, regardless of where you are today, if you are willing to submit to God and do whatever He wants you to do, regardless of if the mess is of your making or someone else's, today you can look in the mirror and you can say, I'm doing the will of God. So first of all, ask. And he says, it shall be given unto you. Secondly, seek, and ye shall find. How do we seek? We seek through the scriptures. God's given us his word. Okay, he spoke to David audibly, but he speaks to us through his word and through his service and through fellowship and through our friends and through our spouses and through our children. And when we seek the scriptures, we discover they are filled with references to what God's will is. A very common one is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, which says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus concerning you and concerning me. See, I'm convinced that we'll never overcome those temptations that buffet us on a daily basis unless we give thanks, not for the temptations, but give thanks for seeing that they are opportunities to test our loyalty with God. You know, rather than woe is me, woe is me, you know, how am I going to get out of this? God's given me an opportunity to test my loyalty to Him. And, it, and that, that temptation, that trial will take on a whole new perspective. I had a young man that uh, came to me and he said that he wanted to quit smoking. You know, and he, he tried patches and he tried the, uh, the uh, pills and all that. You know, and being an ex-smoker, I could empathize with him. And, you know, he was setting dates. Okay, by this time I'm going to be here. By this time I'm going to be here. By this time I'm going to be here. Okay, that's all well and good. But you know what? Dates come and go. <coughs> okay, and if you, don't, if, you, if you don't make it, then you just set another date. But how much different does it take, difference does it take on when you give it to God and you commit to God and you say, okay, Lord, I'm giving this to you and I'm, 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 I'm committing to you that I'm going to do this. See, we don't have to be faithful to dates, but when you make a covenant with God, it's in your best interest if you keep it. And so we have to take those challenges and you know, don't set uh, uh, dates that, that change. If you have a relationship, make a commitment. And then watch God work through you in His power. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Now that one's easy. 
That was clear. You don't have to read anything into that. Okay? That one specifically tells us what God's will is. Micah 6, 8, he says, We are to do justly, we are to love mercy, and we are to walk humbly with God. See, if you do these things, God says you can ask and it will be given. You can seek and you'll find it. And 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. <coughs> so what's the point? If we're willing to walk in these areas, those areas that God has shown us, that He has revealed to us, He will give us guidance in those areas that He has not revealed. When you walk in the light, God gives you more light. And God will give you the ability and wisdom to make good decisions. See, I told my children growing up that they, you, there are two decisions you will make in life. A good one and a bad one. And when you make bad decisions, expect bad consequences. They just run together. But now when you make a good decision, you can expect a good result. Now, I'm not the originator of that because I, I was brought up under that philosophy and I found it to be true. So, you know, but the point is, the point is this, if we're willing to do these things, then God is faithful. We seek Him through His Word. Psalm 62, 5 says, My soul, wait thou only on God, for my expectation is so, when we go to Him in prayer, we wait with full expectation that He's going to give us the guidance and leadership that we're seeking. And He will show us the way in whatever way He chooses. Ask in the right motive. Seek through the Scriptures. And then, knock. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. I remember as a child I had a... Uh, I had a paper route, and every Saturday I would have to, or every other Saturday, I'd have to go door to door and I'd have to collect the paper. And I can remember distinctly the folks that had indoor pets, namely dogs. Because if I ring the doorbell and knock on the door, then the dog would be in the door. And of course, they didn't come to the door right away, and the more the dog barked, the more anxiety built up. You know, what if they come to the door and that dog charges out and just eats me up? You know, I couldn't leave. I had to collect. But, you know, pretty soon the owners would come to the door and they'd look at the dog and they'd... Shh, shh. And the dog would quiet down. He'd go on about his business. I'd take care of my business. Okay? Let me tell you something. That is precisely, precisely how the devil will work.
Revelation 3, 7, he wrote to the church in Philadelphia. These are the words of him who is holy and true. What he opens, no man can shut, and what he shuts, no man can open. So, you know, you can, you can apply that to that job, that house that you're thinking about buying, that person that you're praying about marrying. Okay, because God will open the, he will open the doors, he will close the doors. Okay, move in that direction, fully telling God that if you're not going in the right direction, he has every right to stop you. God, if I'm moving in the wrong direction, stop me. Show me. This is where praying to him about every decision that we make comes in. He's faithful when we seek his guidance and his wisdom. And you say, but Pastor Chad, hey, I've made lots of decisions that I didn't consult God on, and they worked out. Well, I have too. But I've come to realize those weren't God's faithfulness because I was faithful. That was God's faithfulness in being merciful to me. Because he didn't have to allow any of them to work. And one other thing, when you knock, be persistent. See, asking, seeking, and knocking are present tense. And when you ask, keep asking. When you seek, keep seeking. And when you knock, keep knocking. Because God will always give you what, He won't always give you what you want, but He will always give you what is best. And if you look at the rest of that text in Matthew 7, He says, which of you, if you, if your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, through all your evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? If we truly believe that God is good, then we will truly desire his will for our lives. I can't tell you, and I can't stand up here this morning and tell you specifically, each one of you, what God's will is for your life, but I can tell you this. If you ask Him, if you seek of Him, if you knock, He promises He'll give you something good. Amen? Amen. We're going to ask the elders to join me up here. I've gone a little over, so we won't close with a song. But uh, we are here. We are here to minister to you. You know, maybe you've made a, a wrong turn or two in the last week. Uh, you know, maybe there's some decisions that you want to bring to God, but you don't know how. Okay, we're here to minister with you, for you, and to you. Okay? We're here to help you. So, uh, with that, I'm going to ask Ted if he'll close our service, and we will linger up here if you'd like to come up with prayer. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for it is the guidance that we draw from. But Lord, as you give us instructions, let us follow us. Let us ask you. Let us seek and knock. Lord, the only way to knock on a door is you have to go to that door. Lord, I can't stand here and knock on a door in the distance. I have to go there. So Lord, in the midst of it, you're calling us to come before your throne. To knock on your door for the answers we need. So Lord, let us humbly go before your throne. Because you asked us to come. You invited us to come. So we thank you, Lord, that you will answer. You will help us find and you will open the doors as we come before you. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Save a little fellowship for us, will you? <laughs>